.NET multi-platform app UI, or MAUI, cross-platform framework development to Android, iOS, macOS using Mac Catalyst, and Windows. I'm going to set up this environment on macOS. If you only want a subset of target devices, this process is far easier, but I'm going to target them all in this example. To start, make sure you've installed Xcode, and if you haven't launched it, run it once to assure components are installed. We'll need simulators, so check preferences, platforms, to see what devices are currently installed. Next up, we'll need to install .NET workloads. There are three workloads we'll need to install. Android, iOS, and Mac Catalyst. To install them, execute sudo .NET workload install MAUI Mac Catalyst and repeat sudo .NET workload install MAUI iOS and sudo .NET workload install MAUI Android. There are a few other dependencies we'll address along the way. I'm going to use JetBrains Writer, create a new solution and use the MAUI template. I'm going to create a .NET MAUI Blazor app in this example. You'll notice there are three run configurations. A Xamarin Android, a Xamarin iOS, and Xamarin Mac. In order for any of those to run, we'll need to set up some additional environment. Go to JetBrains Preferences. In the Environment section, we'll need to install Xamarin Android and Xamarin iOS and Mac SDKs. Run the Xamarin Android install. Then run the Xamarin iOS and Mac install. If you wonder where these are installed, they're in your system library under Frameworks. Next, go to Build, Execution, Deployment, and find Android. When you come in here the first time, it probably looks like this. We'll need to configure the Android SDK, the Android NDK, and add a Java JDK. Let's start with the Android SDK. Press the Install New link. I'm not sure why this dialog is so huge. We're going to install the Android SDK as well as an SDK platform. I'm going to use API 33 Android Tiramisu. Click Next to verify, and these will be installed in your user library under Android. Accept the license agreement, and it's installed. Now that our Android SDK is set up, we'll need to address SDK components, and this is a little strange. While we already added API 33, we need to explicitly configure the SDK components here. Find your API level on the list, which is currently 33. And this UI is a little confusing. Select the SDK platform that you want to install. A download arrow will appear on the left, but pressing that doesn't download the SDK platform. It just indicates that a download will occur when we submit these settings. It becomes obvious when we press save. And now you can see what will occur when we confirm these changes. The following components will be installed. After the SDK component installer completes, you'll see your SDK platform status as installed. Next, let's move on to the Android NDK. Do a search for Android NDK, and you should see a link to it for Android developers. Go to Downloads, and find your version, Mac Darwin in this example. Now, you could extract this disk image to a location on your Mac, but I'm just going to mount this disk image and reference the volume. Double-click to mount, and now my NDK location will be the Android NDK disk image mount point. Finally, here is a Java JDK. You might already have a version of Java that's supported. Mine was in conflict. It suggests version 11, which we can obtain in two ways. We could download this JDK from Oracle by going to the Java Archive, find Java SE 11, then locate your system. For me, macOS ARM64, since this is an M1 processor. And since I don't want to install this system wide, I would pull the gzip tar archive. While this works, I've seen other people recommending the OpenJDK version, which is available by Microsoft, and that's what I'm going to use. Search for Microsoft OpenJDK, and here on the download page, find OpenJDK version 11 for your system. Again, for me, this is macOS Arc64 for M1, and I want the gzip tar archive since I don't want to install the system wide. With that downloaded, double click to expand, and I'm going to place this folder in an SDK directory I made in my home account. So my JDK path will be that archive we just extracted and navigate into Contents, Home. All right, we can finally start running some configurations. Let's start with Mac Catalyst. Launch. And here it is, native Mac OS app running Blazor with WebAssembly inside. Let's try Android. When you select the Android Run configuration, you'll probably have no devices set up at first. Under Devices, select the Device Manager, 
In here, press Create Device, and I'm going to create a Pixel 6 device. For System Image, make sure to match your API level. At this time, is API 33. Press the Download icon, accept the license agreement, and your image is installed. All right, now we have a device, so we can launch this run configuration. First launch and deploy will be a little sluggish. But here it is, our MAUI app running on Android. Now for iOS, we need to set up another property, which is kind of silly. Go back to Preferences under Build, Execution, Deployment, and find Toolset and Build. Here we need to add our JDK path to MS Build Global Properties. Press Edit, use the plus icon to add a new property. Our property name will be Java SDK Directory, and our value will be exactly the same as we configured previously. The Microsoft OpenJDK GZIP TAR archive we extracted and placed in the SDK folder on the file system. Remember to append the contents home to the path. Change our run configuration to iOS. Select our device simulator. I'll go with iPhone 14. And again, first launch and deploy will be sluggish. And then, yeah, pretty lame. There seems to be a bug specifically with Blazor in the last couple of weeks. Not entirely sure, seems like it might relate to SSH. Don't know, I'm sure it'll be resolved soon. Kind of anticlimactic here, but we see that it works. And just to prove it's working, I'll create another Maui app without Blazor following exactly the same steps, and we'll see it functioning here.